School Music Arts. We have been looking into your surveys that your parents have been filling out and some people suggested that we do video lessons. Um, so we're gonna try it this week and let me know, did it help you? Did it make it worse? Um, hopefully this is a good way to help those of you like me who don't like reading directions or struggle with understanding what somebody has written and trying to process that into what they actually want. So your job this week, we're t taking a break from storytelling. Yay, you finished it. And we're going into music notation and actual music reading. Um, those of you in band probably already know that reading music is like reading another language. There are different symbols that mean different things and those symbols tell us how long to make a sound, what kind of sound it's supposed to be, and how high or low the sound is supposed to work. And other symbols can tell us volume, tempo, um, accents, so like when I talk there are certain emphasis on different parts of the word that help the word sound the way it's supposed to sound. So for instance, music is not music or it's not mu or it's not I always struggled with this one. It's a different way to say it. A lot of you might hear the 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 phrase, I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable, I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Um, these are just examples of accents, but I'm getting off topic. So you will find all of this week's work under music reading notation on Google Classroom, or you will have a packet. Please, if you are getting a packet, understand that I am attaching all of old prior work until everybody has turned in that assignment. So if you have a giant thick packet, don't freak out. Not all of it is due this week. Some of it you've already done. Don't worry. So we're going to start with the rhythm, rhythm value charts. And if I open it on Google Classroom, the video attached, by the way, I have gotten some of your comments. I'm working to see if our like tech coordinator can help me unblock my personal channel on YouTube um, because it's one of my videos that was something to show you guys how to copy um, pictures and symbols on a, a Google document and paste it into the chart. So if I look at my chart, which hopefully all of you have it up right now, there's one column for pictures. This is your picture of a pizza and we want the fraction of the pizza that is going to match the column next to it or the words. So for the first row, I have a whole pizza. The word, the fraction and the music note are blank. And then the rest kind of looks like an upside down hat or like a hole in the ground, right? So, some of you have heard me already say what the word is. It's whole. The fraction, if I have a whole pizza, I have one pizza. And the music note also looks like a whole. There's no stick attached to it and it's got an empty white center. Now if I go keep going down, I'm going to divide the thing by two. So what is one divided by two? If you said one over two or a half, that's correct. And I'm going to continue to do this. Now there, in music, there is a funny word for one fourth. Those of you that might play basketball or football or soccer know these as quarters. And that's exactly what it is. A quarter is one fourth. And then we go down to an eighth and a sixteenth. Your goal is just to complete the chart. Now, 
you might have to Google what some of these look like. That's totally fine. Uh, ask your parents. They might be able to help you. As the notes progressively get smaller and smaller, they're going to start adding sticks or stems. And they're going to start adding flags. So we go from open circle to open circle with a stick to close circle with a stick to close stick close circle with a stick and a flag and etc 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 it goes for quite a while the next assignment that we go to is the time signature comprehension time signatures are just a way for us to help organize music kind of like the way you would organize a pantry, I guess. You would put certain things in, in certain containers, and once that container is filled, you'd move on to the next container. So for us, our containers are called measures. A measure is a distance from a bar line, which is a vertical line, to the next bar line. It's kind of like a room in your house. Inside of a measure, we're only allowed so many beats, and the ones that you're going to see the most often is called 4-4, four, four. okay? It is also called common time, because it's that common. In 4-4, four, four, the top number tells me that I can have four beats in a measure, but I don't know what a beat is unless I look at the bottom number. The bottom number is a four. We're going back to that fraction of one-fourth. So what is the word for one-fourth in music? If you said quarter, you're right. So I can have four quarter notes in a measure. Equally, I can have whatever else equals four quarter notes. So that could be two half notes, uh, a whole note, eight eighth notes, sixteen sixteenth notes, you kind of see how this progresses, and I can have any combination therein as long as I ultimately end up with four beats in a measure. Those of you that are in band, we're not going over pickup measures or hanging, uh, hanging ending measures. Don't worry about that. So your goal with this assignment for the time signature comprehension is to look at the bottom number in the first section and tell me what gets the beat. So again, go back to your rhythm value chart that you created and look at the fraction. Look at what number matches the bottom number on your fraction column and that will give you the note that you need. For the top number, it tells me how many beats. Ultimately, you just have to copy that. Um, if I have four in the top, I have four beats in a measure. Does this make sense? I hope so. The last one is the tricky one and where I'm probably going to get a lot of you that kind of don't know what to do. <laughs> um, so, for instance, number one, where you see this 4-4 four, four time signature again. I want the number of notes that get a beat. So, I, I know that by looking at the bottom number, my note that I'm going to draw or copy or use is the quarter note in 4-4. Four, four. The top number tells me that I need to draw four of them or copy and paste four of them on my Google Doc. Um, again, control C, control V, there's a, all the notes that you need to use at the bottom of the first page and you can click on them and then control C, click where you want them to show up, control V, um, and it should pop up no problem. If you do have problems, please contact me, ask a parent. Um, you can draw these, you can turn them in uh, at the Dropbox or you can take pictures, you can email. Whatever works best for you, we will do our best to be flexible with it. Going on, whew, steady beat verse rhythm. This one is by far, I think, the easiest assignment. You're going to listen to a song, uh, your personal preference. So I'm going to pull up, 
let's say, let's say I'm going to pull up uh, High Hopes by Panic at the Disco, uh, one of my favorite songs. And I would play this for a parent or um, a sibling, whatever. The biggest thing that we're trying to separate is steady beat and rhythm. So we all know the rhythm for high hopes is da 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 But it changes when the singer actually starts to sing. The difference is the steady beat won't change, so I'm going to play a little bit for you and hopefully not have YouTube hate me. And you can kind of feel how the song is just pulsing along. And it won't change regardless of what he's doing. Now, there are some songs that the, the steady beat does change. It's called a retardando. I know, funny word. Means, excuse me, means to slow down. Or an accelerando, which means to speed up. Uh, you can kind of hear it from rit, uh, which even in English means to slow. And from a cell or excel, accelerate, okay? Um, and it can kind of be a fun game. I mean, you don't have to make it a huge thing on your schedule. Sit down with your family and just like headbang to your favorite metal song or stomp out a rhythm to your favorite country song or whatever have you. I, I'm just looking for a check on your survey saying, yeah, we did it. Um, and for you to understand the difference. Ultimately, we want to get that down to your foot because your foot is going to keep the steady beat when we do the next exercise, which is keep a steady beat and clap a rhythm that matches your steady beat. Speaking of, your next assignment would be intro to rhythmic counting. So here we start to in, uh, in, input the what makes a sound and what makes silence. So we're only using quarter notes and quarter rests, okay? A quarter note gets one beat like we talked about before. So all of your assignments are going to be in 4-4. Four, four. So I can only count to four in this example. So say number one. I need you to count the notes per measure. Now, remember that a measure is that vertical bar line. And that tells me, oh, we're done with this room. Time to start counting again. So I'm looking at my assignment. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four. That should be the last note in that measure. And then I'm on to measure two. One, rest, three, four. Now, the reason that I say one, rest, three, four is because that quarter rest takes the place of beat two. Yes, it's not supposed to make a sound. Yes, it still fills the value spot of two. So that way I know that I have to go one, three, four. I hope that makes sense. So the entire number one should sound and look kind of like this. One, two, three, four. One, three, four. One, three, four. One. Two, three. I hope this helps. If not, please, 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 please email, call, text, whatever, and we'll walk you through how to do this.
because this is the building blocks of our our language and music. When you hit something called a double bar line, which is one vertical line like a regular bar line and a thicker uh, bar line on the end, that signifies that you've reached the end of the example. Please continue to count and clap and play each example until you reach the end example, the double bar line. And then the counting bigger values continues on um, with that, but we're now adding half notes, whole notes, and half rests. So for instance, When I have a longer value, like a whole note, I'm going to clap on the starting sound and then shake for as long as it lasts. So a whole note lasts for four beats or four quarter notes. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. And then I get to clap again for the next note. So for instance, these are longer because whole notes, half notes, take up longer things, but you don't have nearly as many assign er, problems. So number one looks and sounds something like this. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, three, four. One, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You'll notice I start to throw my hands apart whenever there is supposed to be silence. This lets me know as a musician that I'm giving the space required for the rest and there's no urge to accidentally clap my hands and make an, any extra noise. Um, you do not have to do this if that bothers you, but please make sure it, it it's just like having loud people and quiet people. You want to show the same respect for your loud people and your quiet people, not just run over your quiet people because they're not making a sound. You know what I mean? Okay. That concludes all five objectives for this week. This is supposed to be 20 minutes a day or ultimately a hundred minutes a week. If you get it all done on day one, that's up to you. I'm not here to tell you how to do your schoolwork. But please understand that these are supposed to build off each other. So please start at the beginning and work your way down. It's really difficult to teach the last lesson before teaching the first lesson. If you guys have any questions, um, even if it's not for music arts, you need help with math, whatever, let me know. I'm going a little stir crazy in my house and you guys know I basically live and work at the school. So it's been interesting. Um, but please don't just email or leave a comment and then wander off. I've had a lot of students that go, I don't know how to do this, and then don't respond for three days. It takes anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes for me to get an update that you guys have commented on Google Classroom. And I usually answer within the next five-ish minutes. Um, uh, if you have an immediate question, I do have Google Meet that you can use or call me. Uh, my phone is in front of me 24 seven. And the number that's listed on the website is actually my personal cell phone number. So you can get a hold of me anytime. And this goes for parents too. If you guys need anything like, I don't know if you guys need help with schoolwork, if you need help with, um, getting food for your kids for lunch. If you need help with whatever, just hit us up. If your kid's working more than 20 minutes a day on our stuff, let us know. This is a new territory for everyone and we're trying to 
do our best to accommodate what we can. So I guess good luck with week three. Um, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Bye.